All right, I've got the panel now completely sanded up to 150 grit, which is perfectly fine for what we're doing. Um, it's supposed to be a rough panel door. Um, it's not supposed to be like a hardwood piece of cherry or something. We're gonna be staining it kind of like a brownish red. Um, I'm gonna be mixing a couple of different colors, so we'll show you that. Um, but now it's time to notch or route rather the, um, the V grooves. And part of the reason you do this, um, you'll see this on some kinds of cabinets um, where they will have a small beveled edge between, um, right over the seam where, uh, between the two boards where they meet. And part of the reason they do this, I think, personally, is to hide the, um, the joint in plain sight. And um, so sometimes when you put two pieces of wood together, um, the grain may not align or it may still be a little bit uneven because you can't sand maybe you know too shallow or something like that and and essentially what you end up with is is uh, a joint that would ordinarily call your attention to it and not look that great but by doing this kind of method here where you're actually um, accentuating the joint between the two pieces you're kind of hiding it in plain sight you're calling attention to it but it's in a way that is like, oh, that's a V groove in there and you don't even think about it. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we've got 11 one by fours basically glued together. So we're gonna have to do 10 of these, um, you know, routed V notch. And all I'm using is this compact router um, with the V groove bit. Um, you can get this at any home center. Uh, like I said, I don't know if you can see that very well from there, but it's just a very small quarter inch shank um, v groove bit and it's just barely poking up maybe an eighth of an inch um, or a little bit less um, above the surface uh, of the sled that the router rides on. Now you'll notice that this sled that came with the router is round on one half and square on the other so I have to be very careful um, I you know whenever I, I have this kind of a base I always use the round part because there's some amount of leeway that you can turn um, where because it's round, it's the same dimension um, to each of the sides, to any point around the, the, the rounded side. And so if I turn the router a little, oh, it's not going to be, it's not going to go off or I'm not going to get a wobbly line or something like that. Whereas if I use the square part and I turn that even a little, that is going to go right off and I'm going to get a, a wave or an, an offset groove and I do not want that. All right, so how do I set up for this, uh, to this V-groove routing? Well, I know that the distance from the very tip uh, of the point in the center to the, any of the outside edge along um, this half circle here is exactly two inches. Conveniently, my square is also exactly two inches, excuse me, wide on this side. So all I'm gonna do is take a longer piece of straight edge and I'm going to clamp it to the edge and how I'm going to make sure as I move um, to this progression, you know, as I move from one board to the next to the next throughout the piece, I'm just going to make sure that this, um, that this carpenter square is just touching the line uh, between the two boards and then I get to back up um, the straight edge into that and then as long as this um, you know, temporary fence here is two inches from the seam, I know that my router will go right over the center of the seam between the two boards. And then all I'm gonna do is keep moving this along uh, as I do it. In fact, I'll, I never like to be working more than about a foot and a half away from myself. Um, even when I'm sanding, once you're out here, it's like it just becomes much more difficult to apply pressure and your joints hurt a little bit more if you're, if you're older. Um, and, uh, and so I'm going to end up turning it around probably halfway through. Now, the one thing that you have to be mindful of, of straight edges like this, um, is that it will bow. So if I clamp it at both ends, I also have to clamp it in the middle. Um, and that is because as I'm kind of pulling toward me, as I'm moving the router down, um, when I get to the center, even though this is against the long grain, um, it's gonna it's gonna move and it'll become like a little bit of a smiley face, if you will. And I'm gonna go off the center of the 
um, off center from the seam that I, I'm trying to disguise here. Um, so what we'll end up doing is for the first board or two, we'll clamp it um, in the middle to hold it um, exactly where we need it from the seam. But as we get further out, like here, how am I going to be able to, to put a clamp? I don't have a clamp with this long of a throat on it. And all you have to do, oh, of course I put it somewhere else. All you have to do is put a board um, behind this and you know, make sure that the, that the center is two inches away from the seam and then I'll back up a board that's perpendicular to this and I'll just clamp that back here. And as this moves out, I can just move that board um, and I can use any you know, length of board here about you know, a foot and a half long or 18 inches long and I can just clamp that board and that will hold the middle from bowing down. Uh, toward me as I'm pulling the router. So let's get this first one clamped up. I usually just start in the middle and I'm putting the edge of the straight edge, the inside edge of the straight edge uh, of the square here, right on the line exactly at each corner. And then I'm going to drop that and then pick it up and put it back and I'm going to butt it right up against it. It should be in the outtakes, but hey, this is sort of live, I guess. So, And then I'm going to go ahead, well, let me move this down so it covers both halves. Okay, and so then I'm just going to make sure that my router has enough clearance to pass by the uh, clamp, and then I'm going to clamp that down. And now what I'll do is I'll just slide it down to here and pull it back just a little so I can reveal the line. Make sure that I'm on the line down here as well. And then I can clamp this one down. So you notice, you know, I'm not, I'm not measuring anything here. I'm just um, using what I have um, that I know is a, true, is a true dimension that I want and I'm just using that and you'll be correct like you know, every time. Okay, then I'm going to slide it down here on the other end. Make sure that I'm just on the seam on both ends and clamp this guy as well. Now, because I am clamped on both ends in the middle, when I pull the router as I'm going, because I want to pull it tight to the fence so that it doesn't wander out on me, um, I'm going to be, I'm not going to bow the middle of this board or straight edge. And by the way, the same thing happens with a metal straight edge. If you go to Home Depot, you will see next to the levels and all of that stuff in that section, for example, you're going to see this like two four foot pieces of steel, or aluminum rather, that are about this thick. And you can put them together and you're going to have your straight edge. The exact same thing will happen. That's, that straight edge will bow. Um, even sometimes the, uh, um, the tracks, if you're using just a track saw track without the router um, assist that goes with it, you're going to get a bow as you pull toward this, this fence. So this is a good technique to learn. Um, I'm going to start the route. I'll show you one quick line of the V-groove and then I'm going to just move this out. I'll stop in the tape and show you a piece of the, the longer board to, uh, to tell you or show you what I mean about taking care of securing the middle. As you can see from that segment of video, you're going to have to be mindful of the cord and it's it, you always want to have make sure that you have enough cord and that you know where your sticking points are. The first panel that I did that's behind me, I kept getting hung up on this cord, so now, you know, it, it just tells you like that you gotta get, uh, you gotta be mindful of where everything is kind of at. All right, so that's the first V-notch groove. Um, I'm just gonna keep moving this board up, you know, and measuring it off with the, uh, with the square, just like I did clamping the middle and the two sides. And then I'll just repeat this process uh, nine more times, I guess, to do the 10 in between. When we cut this door, I've already cut it to length. 
um, what I found out is on this door, I have to cut about an inch off of each long side as well um, so that the width will end up the proper width. But as you'll see, um, as long as things are symmetrical, in my opinion, they, they look okay. Like even if, even if the, the groove between the first, the distance between the first groove and the inside of the style is going to be a little shorter than the distance between each V groove down the panel, that's okay because it's exactly the same on the other side and so it looks like it's meant to be there. And that's really what you're shooting for when you do this kind of custom work. Um, it's very difficult unless you do this same exact thing every day for a long time. It's, you know, you learn something about how to, you learn something how to improve yourself as you go on. Um, and then and each time you do, you'll get something else. So sure, can I have sized the doors differently or can I use a different jig than what I'm doing now to save time? Probably if I sat down and thought about it, I could come up with a jig that I could just build that has pieces of plywood here you know, all stapled together the right distance, clamp it on, then I can just do one, two, three, four all at once, but I don't have time to sit down and, and think about that or to the time to take to build everything. It's just faster in this case to use this one at a time. Anyway, enough rambling for now. Let me get to finishing these grooves and then um, we'll talk about how we're gonna finish it. All right, very quickly, um, I turn the camera back on here and I've got the, um, I'm only on my third uh, you know, groove here that I'm trying to route out, and I'm already at a point where um, I, you know, I'm, out about, I'm out of clamping space. I don't have a throat deep enough on these clamps to, uh, to be able to set this. So like I said, I just wanted to show you, all I'm gonna do is press down with the, um, you know, with my hand here and apply pressure so that I don't move it I'm gonna snug this up right behind it. And then I can hold that steady. And just make sure that I have that. Now, even though this is not exactly clamped in the middle, it's not gonna move back toward me because I have this you know, piece of scrap. And that's what you'll do is you'll just kind of adjust this piece up you know, as you go and then flip it around and then complete all of your um, your routes. So I'll finish these up and we'll be back in a minute.